Okay. All right. What my paper is about is the way superstition and religion, the women, your mom, your grandma, um, had no problem with it blending together and influenced the way we are. Like maybe your music, the way you play, what you wrote, your worldview, that type of thing. So you made a comment, you were talking about the Brown Mountain Lights at one time and that didn't scare you. I'm just trying to initiate the conversation so you'll kind of, things will wake it up a little bit. So that would be a good place to start about your view of the paranormal if you want to talk about it. And, but bearing in mind why you have these views because of your mother and your grandmother, if that's the case, which I saw as the case. CC said, we'll research it a little bit. And then from talking to your mom, she seemed to, you know, she's exactly like my grandmother was. Everything just is okay. <laughs> You see, I went out there as a kid, uh, checking them out. And, uh, this was in high school? Yeah. That when you were telling me that story? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was in high school. And, uh, we'd go out there on top of the uh, table rock. And uh, just, you know, you'd see them glow. Mm -hmm. And you go up close to them and you hear like a sizzling kind of sound. Like a baking pan. See, I've never known anybody who got close to them. <laughs> you, you back off, and they, they will kind of come towards you. You go closer, and they just disappear. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what, how remember. did you explain it? I mean, did you see any biblical? I mean, how did you feel? How did you explain it? Or did you even try? <laughs> well, when I was real little, uh, I just heard Tommy Fell sing that song. Brown Mountain Lights on TV. It was a Tommy Fell show. It was on, I guess, once a week. And I wait, I always wait to hear that song because I love that song. You know, and his, was, his song was, uh, uh, was See, something about a man who uh, came hunting in this wild land alone. Here, so they say, the hunter lost his way. And never returned to his home. So way over yonder, night after night until dawn, his faithful old slave come back from his grave, but searching, searching for his master long, long ago. So they said it was the slaves looking for his master. Well, I can look that one up too. Yeah, Tommy Fell, Charlotte. Well, he was being filmed in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I know the name. He used to watch Fred Kirby show. He may have been on yeah. that with him somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Fred Kirby, I saw him up at Tweetsie a bunch of times because he came up there. I sneak up behind him and take his bullets out of his, uh, <laughs> out of his holster. He'd say, come back here with that, and he'd grab him and take him away. Yeah, good sport. But uh, anyhow, um, so the Indians supposedly saw him. Some people say it's car lights reflecting. Which they've been around too long for that. And the Indians saw him, so and the Indians was, were saying, stories I remember that uh, it was the uh, braves with torches looking for their wives that had been killed during the massacre. Hmm. What did you think though? Well, I think they did were. you believe all of the above? Well I had an uncle, he's a he collects rocks, he's a rock and and uh, you know some people say it was gases and things like that. He seems to think that it's the Earth because there's a fault there. The Earth is slightly moving. And the rocks are moving against each other and causing electromagnetic sparks, if you will, flying up and stuff. So, I don't know. So, was that why you weren't afraid? Were you afraid when you heard that? That would explain the sizzling and the crackling. Yeah. But not why it, why it would be that so sensitive. Yeah. If, uh, they come towards you or something that's probably causing electromagnetic fields around the body and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, no, they didn't really scare me. Around my last I remember there's a small, small kid on the parkway. There's a place you can look off. And Dad taking me there. And we were looking at the Brown Mountain Lights one night. And I remember a panther screaming in the background. I remember that mountain, how spooky it was. 
Wow. Yeah. When I was real little, yeah, it scared me. Because I got older, not as much. And I still go today out there to, to see it. Yeah. I've seen them go up and burst into colors, and red and green. And they just fly down through the gorge. And they'll go dim, and they'll light back up. And go dim, light back up. So what did your mama think about them? Did she ever see them? She ever say? She, she saw him with us when I was real small. Did uh, she ever say what she did? Not that I know. She always, uh, she's always, uh, you know, always into the paranormal. Uh, you say paranormal? Yeah. Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. Hanks. We call them Hanks. Okay, we talked about superstition, and that that's a good, um, she obviously, well she probably thought it was a at one time in her life, those lights. I would speculate, and I can ask her, I'll ask her about all this, but were there any other, or any things that happened as you were growing up that maybe she saw, or your dad saw, or your grandmother saw as supernatural, um, superstitious, that you can remember? Because what I'm thinking about is the things that we learn as children. How do we feel about them today? I, mean, I explain things away and say, you know, no, don't believe that. It's against the Bible. You know, all of that. The Bible tells me that there, there are spirits and we can see them. Uh, I don't think it's the, the soul of the person. It says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I think it's the, the soul that is with God, but I think the spirit stays here. That's interesting. So you got you got body, and soul, and spirit are separate. The spirit is the the, the, the countenance of the person. How how I act right now, my personality, that's my spirit. But the soul is the, the inner self that leads. Now is that something that? all of your family beliefs, or is that something that you personally have determined? Um, I, I'd say it more, I've, I've determined that more, I think. But, um, the, uh, well, I can tell you one instance. Uh, Mom could tell you the story. Uh, I believe they were picking beans. You know, Grandma's tell of Tab's wife. So this would have been in the 50s. Hang on, I want to make sure it's recording. I'm taking notes, but I don't yeah. want to if I don't have to. Yeah, I'm just you. paranoid now after talking to CC. All right, it says it is. I'm still going to take notes. So, so, okay, they were picking beans. So I think they were picking beans. With Tab's wife? Yeah. So this would have been your mom's mother-in-law? Mother law. Mother law. Okay. Yeah, Stella. Okay. Her name is Stella Star. Okay. And she was a Hicks worshiper. And uh, Stella was out picking beans. And uh, she said, Look at that. And she looked up and she saw a banjo, a homemade banjo, come flying out of the sky and then hit the ground. Disappeared, and uh, she uh, got stomach cancer after that, and uh, passed away up there in Van der Elk, the old hospital there in Van der Elk. She passed away. Dad, I reckon, gave her gave her blood, and that's how come he got rheumatic fever because it uh, dropped his uh, like his red. Yeah, yeah. Did your mama see it too? I don't remember, you'd have to ask her. Yeah. She said Stella saw the banjo and explained to her. And then she died after that, and then Grandpa started playing the banjo again. Wow. That's pretty cool. So you think that was premonition on her part? What would yeah. you say? Yeah, that? premonition. So yeah, we believe in premonition. Mm -hmm. um, I know this is on your film, but my niece, you know, she's dying right now. And we've had a, a cat bird living in the bush in front of the house for the last three or four months. And it comes out there and screams at me. 
you know, for the past past month or so, and I come home at night and it's flying around the door, and flying in my face and flying all over me. Wow. And, uh, but we, we, me and Mom both think that's a sign of death. You know, the, the death is coming. You know, I've not heard of cat bird, I've heard of an owl. Yeah, Mom's scared of death of owls. I saw them when she was little. Uh, I had uh, Birds were, you know, messengers when the, when Noah was on the ark, you know, the dove brought the twig down. And then when uh, the Spirit of God descended into Christ, you know, it descended as a dove. It descended as a dove, so we believe that the birds are messengers. And uh, one of my best friends passed away when I was uh, about 19. And, uh, I guess I was 20. And uh, anyhow, a bird, like a carbon bird, flew up and hit the window. And if the bird hits the window, gets killed, you know, or just out of itself, if we believe that's the death of the family. And uh, they happened right before my, my buddy got killed in a car crash. I actually had two buddies get killed in a car crash at the same time. So the bird hit the window. And, uh, yeah, that cat bird just really weird it flies in my face and stuff. And once she passes, it won't be around. Right. You think it'll go away? I think it'll go away. I'll be interested to say, I mean, I don't, I hate to speculate like that, but yeah, it's, it's, it's hard just to think about. Me too. I've heard owls hoot and I'll pray them away, or pray it away. That's what I try to do. And, you know, I don't know what that's going against. I had an owl one time fly into my house. I lived in this trailer before we built a house across from mom and dad, and it flew into the little living room we had there. I got a picture of uh, like an old painting of uh, Jesus Christ, maybe with some of the disciples, I'm trying to remember, maybe with some sheep or something. And this owl came in and sat down on that picture, and then sit there. Like up on the top of the frame or something? Top of the yeah. frame, and sit there and perched. And couldn't get it to leave, and sit there for a long, long time. Wow. How big an owl? Was it one of the little ones? Or it was one of the small ones, a little screech, probably about 19 yeah. inches tall. That's interesting. There's a uh, old St. John's Church, which is down below our house. Now, which you'll have to put me there because I know 194 goes all the way across Mass the valley. Road, so. turns right off of 194. Yeah. And then off of Mass Gap, there's a little road that turns off and it goes out to St. John's Church. I think I've seen it. It's real open land kind of out in there for a while, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, my great, 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 great grandfather and grandmother are buried there. The very first wars that came into the Crisis. And the preacher supposedly hung himself in the church. The church has been haunted. We used to go there as kids and hang out. But, uh, my grandfather, my grandmother's husband, on the mama's side, Brady, her husband went there to spend the night as they traveled from Shell's Mills home. He was a cook on the trains, and as they traveled back, they walked most of the time. Sometimes they'd have a horse, but they would walk, you know, four or five of them. The church would always be open, so you could spend the night in the church. And, uh, a lot of people leave their houses open around here. Or yeah, yeah people, people used to come yeah. and stop at people's houses and just spend the night. They either let them in the house or put them in the barn. And they came in there to sleep. While they're there, the doors blew open. And so they took one of the church benches, put it up against the door, and they laid down to sleep. And then the door pushed the bench back. So they come and put uh, two more benches against it to hold it shut. Starts heavy winds, and then the doors just push the benches back again, and they all got scared and ran. <laughs> yeah. Took off out of there. And uh, my ex-wife, not long ago, her brother and her were doing some filming down there. At the church? Yeah, yeah. She's into paranormal. She's been studying paranormal stuff for probably 30 years or more. And uh, they were filming, and they had an apparition to walk off the steps of the church. He had a hat and a long coat. He walked down the steps and he turned and he turned and he had no face. And they had it on film, but his uh, daughter filmed over top of it. 
So it's gone. Her filmed brother's did? Film, yeah, her brother's daughter. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Filmed over the... Like it wasn't supposed to be. Like it wasn't supposed yeah. to be, yeah. A child. Yeah. Yeah. How old is his daughter? His daughter's probably 18, I guess, 17, 18. But uh, Grandma Stella, will get back to her. She was uh, walking down the road, going to get help because her son had a uh, abscess tooth. His jaw was all swollen up. He had a high fever and everything. She was trying to walk to go find a doctor to help him. She got down the road and she looked up. And there was this bush beside the road. And his face had come up and appeared over the bush, just flipped like that. And his face started smiling. And, and she knew his fever had broken. He was better, so she turned around, went back home, and he was better. Wow, that gives me chills. Where? What area is this in? Where Down the river. Down the river. Down the river. Down the river. Okay. Down the river road. Now, River Road is there where... Uh, it starts at Mass down below Mass Store and ends up... Uh, you cross 105? Yeah, Barrow Creek. <coughs> well, it's not 105, it's on the other end. See, I'm on the Watauga River, so it must cut in and go into Valley Cruces. Where are you, where are you talking about? Now? You're talking about Watauga River Road, not yeah. the, the Watauga River? Right, the road. Yeah. Okay. Because I've seen a cut off to Watauga River Road off to the right that kind of goes over. 194. So we're talking 105. About I must be, maybe it's the old walk of Watauga River Road I'm seeing. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah. That's, that's not the river road. Okay. No, it's down Mass Door down the road. Okay. And you go toward Tennessee. Mm -hmm. 321. It comes out to 321. Yeah. Wow. Why do you think this. You hear about them experiencing this more? I mean, I haven't had an experience like that to that intensity. I mean, I've had premonitions. My mom actually saw a bandaged leg coming out of a, like in an attic, drop crawl space crawl where you could get up in there. My cousin saw someone that looked like Abraham Lincoln standing at the foot of his bed. He and his wife saw that and they woke up and this, so they saw it together. But you don't hear about it happening much anymore. I went down to South Carolina, to Charleston, and there's a place called Pulagoon's Porch. It's a restaurant. Me and my cousin, and that's why I met, we're sitting, sitting there eating. There's supposed to be like a ghost dog that's buried out in front of the place and there's also uh, apparitions that are in there. One of them went in the bathroom and so he started beating on the door and screaming and she came inside and started beating around inside of it and she ran out of there and said she'd never go back again. That was on one of the uh, emails she had written to the hotel or whatever. Anyhow, it's a haunted place and we're sitting there eating and my cousin is a very serious person. He looks over and he says, I see a ghost dog. And I went, yeah, right. And so looked over and uh, well, he was pointing at and uh, I saw this little dog walking, it had kind of hair hanging down its eyes, but you could see right through it. And he walked around the room and started coming toward me. Bent never could see it, but he started walking toward me. And I had shorts on, and the hair on my legs stood straight out. And the little dog walked right by him, and he's kind of looking to his right. I'm facing him, and he looked to his right, and I looked down and saw it walking toward me. They walked toward me and I could see it. It looked like gas fumes, just the only way I could describe it. But you could still see it. And it got about right there and then just disappeared. And the night my grandpa passed away, I was uh, walking down the road with uh, my two cousins. And uh, we were talking about grandpa, about uh, one, of them, one of them said, do you think he went to heaven? And I said, yeah, I reckon he did. Everybody was saying, yeah, he was a good man, you know, and we were just talking to three of us. And we were walking down the river road, and we got right in front of, uh, this is 1977. We got right there in front of Grandpa's house, and all of a sudden this scream, this wailing scream came out of the attic of the house. It was like, oh, yeah. it was screaming. 
but if it's still boiling, it's green coming out of that attic. Is there anybody living in the house? At Nobody's the in the house, hasn't been in there for months. Yeah. And we all froze. I could not move. I couldn't move. A bone in my body would not budge. It, just, it scared me so bad. When they say you're so frightened you can't move, I know what it feels that, like. Yeah. And uh, the scream was there, and none of us could talk, but all of a sudden I just felt it go free, and I took off running. And I looked over, and they were running beside of me. We ran all the way down to my aunt's house, went in the house, and we never spoke another word about it. Oh. But uh, they're both deceased now. Oh. So, the only one left. And you have your grandfather's house now, right? Okay, you live on his property or something? I was thinking Grandpa, there was Great grandpa's farm was down there and they divided it up between the youngies, so I built a house on one section. Of it. So is that house gone? No, it's, uh, my uncle Lonnie owned it and he sold it to some people from Charlotte or something. So my question was going to be how did you feel moving back in there? Because I thought your mom said you lived in your grandfather's house, but this was your great grandfather's house? Yes, yeah, great grandfather's. And before that, it was the farthings. The house was uh, there during the Civil War. And, uh, they made it into a, a, a medical hospital, a house. And they, they took bullets out of soldiers on the kitchen table in that house. And uh, there was one man, there's a tombstone up on the hill by the house that was one of the Civil War uh, soldiers. And you can take that tombstone and set it up and fall back over. Set it up and fall back over. His name was John Lewis, and the reason I remember that is because of the song. Yeah. Uh, Homie Wise, you know, John Lewis was the man in that one. But anyhow, there were Civil War soldiers. The Farthings owned that, and uh, on my mama's side, uh, the Guy Boys, their last name was Guy. Uh, the Guy Boys, they were rampaging everywhere. They were gangs, and they were coming through, and uh, they were shooting up the Farthings and shooting up and everything. You know, just the houses and rampaging houses, taking everything out of it. They caught one of them and killed him down there below Grandpa's house and threw him off the cliffs down there. And it killed him. They got their daddy and asked him where the boys were when they were hunting. He said he didn't know. And they took a hickory tree and skinned the bark off of it and made a, a noose and hung him down there in the river. And, uh, this is all on that same property? You no, know, it's on down. On down the way. It's almost was at the Tennessee Lines where the bear was on down there. And then they uh, captured him and a, a Wilson boy, I believe, over in the Beaver Dams. He was taking them down off a mountain to the camp and uh, took the other guy, boy, I can't remember his name. Levi was the daddy. And, uh, Canada was the one they took up on the top of Rich Mountain and stripped the hickory bark off and hung him up there. Killed him up there before they made it down to the camp. And, uh, so the reason I got kind of emotional there for a minute, my grandmother's father, grandfather was John Lewis, and she and I rode all over this area looking for the grave really? of John Lewis. And I, I don't Civil War? That's been, I don't know. That's been, um, she died. So she was well enough to be traveling around. It was who? It was her so grandma? Lewis. It was just what I don't know. I've got to look back through my genealogy, but I remember the name John Lewis, and I had it listed in our genealogy as her daddy, and somebody corrected me and said it had to be her mom's dad. Her grandpa. Her grandpa yeah. But yeah, I was corrected that her daddy was James Spivins. And somebody corrected me, but we went looking for a, the grave of John Lewis, and I just went cold for a minute when you were telling yeah. me that because I've got to go. Supposedly dig. he was killed. Right there. Where's that graveyard? Can you still see it? Is it still there? Oh, yeah, beside my grandpa's house. Ronnie owns the land. You think he'd mind if I walked up in there? No, just okay. Okay. That's for my dad. Sorry, I got <coughs> sidetracked very much. So. Uh, my dad's buried there. My grandpa and dad's buried there. Is it with the church or it's a private cemetery? Family cemetery? It's a family cemetery right there with a fence around it. You see the other part ain't got no fence. It's got all these tombstones cut out of soapstone because there's a soapstone quarry up there. Yeah. And so they're shaped like a human. They come down like that. They've got a round head and they cut shoulders and they go down. And his is in there. His is one of the few that has uh, letters written on it. The John Lewis is the one that falls over all the time? Yeah.
<laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, they used that house there. You know, that me and, when I was real little, Grandpa, you know, he had asthma real bad, and uh, he would uh, stay there in the house by himself. And uh, some of the family come down, stay with him, or either take him somewhere. Me and Dad went down there and stayed with him for about. Uh, over six months or a year, so I stayed all the time. Dad would take off and go work, and I'd stay there with Grandma. But all night long, you'd hear stuff up in the attic, just slamming around and beating and banging. The place was so haunted, and it scared me to death as a kid. Is this the one that wrote the song about the bachelor? Batching on the farm? Batching on the farm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, when you talk to the kids today, that would be great to add that in if you want to. We don't have to tell you how to perform, but that would be cool. Freak them out the whole lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, the house is spooky. Yeah. They said when they had Grandma Stella in there, they, they put her casket inside the house. She's laying there in the coffin. Right and, uh, underneath the house, one of the beams must have broken something. The house settled and slammed like that. She jumped up out of the coffin slightly and scared everybody to death. Oh, yeah. Lord. <laughs> well, did you ever, and this is totally off track, but since we're talking about that type of thing, did you ever know of them setting a clock on the table? And it, when it got to a certain time is when they stopped. I mean, when my grandfather died up at Beach Mountain, Grand, Grand, Cranberry, up in that area. Yeah. Um, little Stout, they called him, said so they set him out in the room and they had um, the, the coffin on the table and then they had one table in there and there was a clock and a bottle of whiskey and a glass and you could go up and say something about him, take a drink of whiskey and they did it and for him it was until 4 o'clock, it was 24 hours and the clock, when it was 4 o'clock they stopped everything and they took him and buried him. Have you ever heard anything about that type of tradition? Because I can't find anything either. They were Scotch or Irish. Or, oh, and so I've researched in that, but I just wondered, since you've lived around here, if you've ever heard of that done before. Yeah. They were um, Holy Rollers. Yeah. Baptist. But I, that sounds more like a Scotch, Scottish tradition or an Irish tradition yeah, or something. Yeah, just kept drinking it probably Irish, yeah. what do you think? Well, he had a whiskey recipe. Scott, yeah. They let him uh, make it, the government let him make it during Prohibition because they said it was so good. <laughs> yeah, supposed to be good. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you a story about an old woman, a ghost woman that come out to her house and she picks up wood chips and her apron and she picks them up. And this is her house she's in now? No, this is over here in where she yeah. grew up. Okay. She's little? Yeah. You can go out there and see if I saw that ghost too. You can see it over the yard. It's like a white mystery. That's back when I was a teenager. I used to go ghost hunting when I was a teenager. The old uh, Hattie House. The Hattie House was haunted. That was above or below Stanley Hicks' house. Which is, I don't know where these landmarks uh, are. You'll have to tell me. It's uh, going into Beaver Downs, Pure Road, up that way. I've seen a Hicks Road. Is there a, name, is there a road named after a Hicks up in there somewhere? I might be thinking of somewhere else. I've driven I forgot around, which road you turn up now. It's right before you get into Bethel. Okay. And uh, you turn left to go up in there. That's where Stanley lived. He said he'd seen lots up in there all night long. The woman that was in there, she died when her cats ate her. Oh, house. <laughs> yeah, she's buried out behind the house. We used to go there as kids. It was a spooky place. I can imagine. Everybody's kids, you know, when I go ghost hunting there, they get ghost hunting. And that one has to have trees to it. Yeah. The old mass farm in. Yeah. Across the mass store. Yeah. In a few weeks, if everything goes right, I'll be going in there and doing some paranormal research in that house. Got permission to go in there. What did they say? What do you think's going on? Uh, there's somebody who gets up and slams around at three o'clock in the morning and walks around. You can see an apparition out the window. Out the window? You're standing in, you see it? I think so, yeah. That's what I hear. We'll, we'll yeah. see. And you videotape it? Yeah, we're going to videotape it and do all that kind of stuff. Do the research. So I'm still into it. Well, you've been doing this. There's like all those TV shows on there. Or people making big money off of that stuff going in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like it. 
I'm talking about Al's earlier. I was on my way to St. John's one time with a little Volkswagen Beetle driving out through there. I was by myself. I was just going to go out to church and sit and see if we could see anything. And I got halfway out there and this big, great one down just flew out of the tree like this and landed right in front of my Volkswagen. Just, just sit there. <laughs> and it was like this and opened his wings and kind of hissed. Like that. But it reversed and got out of there. I was like, it ain't meant to be. So do, you, you, uh, do y'all think owls of the devil or just a, just a, you know, a god or just a spirit? Neutral? I don't know. Those birds, are, they give you signs. I don't know if it's, yeah. it's a, uh, you'd think it'd be well, they're God's from God, creatures. God's yeah. Yeah. They're God's creatures. Yeah, I think it's God's probably. Yeah. Well, in other words, I don't think it's possessed. God, don't you wonder now what you would have seen if you'd get from cold? No. <laughs> scary but uh, they say if you go looking for the St. John's Church and you ride out the river road that uh, there's an old man with a lantern that'll stop you and ask you where you're going yeah. that was one of the old stories that was told did you ever run into it you ever just see it no. oh, man. and you've explained how you all see and see I hadn't even thought about that with the birds being signs I've always tried to <laughs> Ignore that. No, Grandma taught that. Grandma taught me that. Out of the Bible. Yeah. The verse. Bra Grandma Brady. Yeah. Your mama's mom. Yeah. Her two messages. And she was Native American, so that kind of pulls in not only Bible scripture, but also Native American belief, too. Yeah. yeah they That's always believe that stuff. See, I live down where I live in Fosco. I mean, there, that whole area you've got, it's right past, uh, right before you get up Seven Devils and the Raven's Roost. And there's crows all in that. I can't, they're not ravens, they're not big enough to be ravens, but there's crows all in that area. And I'm sitting at my, my apartment, it has skylights in it. I've got my desk under one and I'm sitting, I forget what I was working on. I don't think it was this paper, that would be even stranger. But I heard something tapping on the skylight and I look up and there's a crow sitting up there tapping on the skylight up and I'm thinking, okay, just I told you about closing pocket knife. Yeah. But they, would that they be scripturally based? Yeah. Would that be in the Bible? I mean, that. I don't know. See, that's a different. I gotta look at the clock because I don't want us to be late getting in Because those are. What's it say? I told you, we, we grew up, if you gave someone something sharp, you give me a knife, I have to give you a silver coin or a dime, reasonable facsimile of a silver coin. It can't be a penny, it has to be a dime or a quarter. Um, and that was to keep from cutting the friendship. So when you give a book, you have to put an inscription in it, and I can't remember the reason of that. Probably kind of along the same things. My mom, you walking down the street, if you're walking with someone and you walk, you know, like on either sides of a column or something or anything, you have to say bread and butter to keep the friendship together. Have you ever heard of that one? Uh -uh. That was, she was West Virginia and German. Her mom was German, so I imagine some of those came from there. If, if you dig a plant, like a ginseng plant that you want to take out yeah. of the ground and use, then you have to take a, a bead. Leave the gift, yeah. Leave the now Beated there's a great ground. film about that, the plants of the Cherokee, that I showed my students early on in the semester. And that about the plants talking to you. Have you ever seen that film? You would enjoy it. They've got it up in the Appalachian collection on DVD. But she had a she the son's telling the story of his grandmother taking him out to look for medicine. And she said this plant he knew what plant she was looking for. He thought he knew. And she said, no, that's not the one, no, that's not the one. She kept on saying, and um, she finally said, this is the one. And when they dug the root, it, it turned over in her hand, just being still on, it, on its own. And that's how they knew that it was the one. So it's a great video if you like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like stuff. Yeah. Students like that. Anyway, another one, that guy that 
one that was the police officer also, which was strange, from the granny. What was the nurse? My mom used to remove warts with a Bayberry candle. Um, but they didn't say the prayers a lot of things that they did like that. And my dad always said she was a witch, which kind of troubled us. That he said my mom and my grandma were witches, but I mean they were Christians, so that, that always kind of bothered me that my dad... Yeah, they said the same thing about Grandma Brady. Did they? Yeah, they thought she was a witch. Granny Guy, they thought she was a witch. She was the one who birthed mom and all the people on the Beach Mountain. Rise of God. Bertha was the midwife. She's midwife, yeah, and her I've got a poem, I've got a selection, a set of poems about little sayings about that type of thing. They think that they think Granny's a witch until it comes to helping them and then they call her a saint. Yeah. Until they need her. Grandma took away wars. What how did she do that? She used to protect her. Grandma Brady, you have to tell me now that you've mentioned, so Granny was Granny Guy, and Grandma was your Grandma Brady, what you called her? Yeah, Granny, Granny Guy was actually a cousin, that was Jack Guy. Okay. You just called her Granny Guy? Yeah, but I just called her Granny Guy, and Plaza Guy. But uh, Grandma Brady, uh, she used a potato, and when you cut the potato, you have to leave an eye in the piece. Do you take a pen and hold it on the candle and heat it up and then you pick the wart and you pick the center of it and you make blood. And then you take the potato and the uh, wipe. Now that sounds like that probably has some scientific, um, what they call scientific. It's all, yeah, it's all metaphysical, I think. Then you wipe it. And then you have to take a white cloth. You use more than one. You use like three, three eyes. Okay. And you take a white cloth and then wrap up the white cloth. And then take it outside and bury it. So as the potatoes grow, it's pulling the warts off the flesh. Wow. And you see the I saw her take 72 off of my neighbor. 72 of them. She took 12 off of me. And I had a boy I went to high school with. And he had warts. She came in there. And he said, "I'm gonna." He said, "I want these warts taken off." She goes, "Okay." And, uh, she walked up to me like this and stuck her fingers in my hair, curled her fingers around here, and said some words. You remember? You don't remember the words? No. It was fast. Yeah. And she curled her finger like this and she said the magic words were the word and then she rubbed it. And then she she'd Just never tell you where she buried him. She said never talk about it again after she'd rubbed it. Never speak of it. Oh. So I've seen her do that many times. So we just spoke of it. Up, is that better? Are you gonna get your works back? <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna work if you talk about it. Okay. You to, you can't say a word about it. Okay. Yeah. When she's doing it. But after it's done, then you can talk about it. Uh, after it's done, you never speak about it. You never speak about it. But you just spoke of it. Huh? You just spoke of it. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> that's why I said your work's going to come back. My if God. they do, we'll go see my mom. So you, that's what you told me. Never speak about it. And she told fortunes with cards too. Yeah. Now your mom mentioned that. Didn't you learn that? Was yeah. it you that told me that a little bit? Yeah. yeah I can, I can read. Yeah. Why did you stop? Do you still do it? I told a guy's fortune, and uh, the death card came up like within a short period of time, and he was killed in a car crash. Had an epileptic seizure, crashed his car within two weeks of me telling him. So I just quit. Huh? Your mom said that um, Brady stopped because she thought it was against that the church, maybe that had to do with them calling her a witch, but said that she stopped because the church wanted her to stop. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah. yeah the church did but you know, there were there's gifts of prophecy. Maybe it's because the cards are involved that they didn't like it. But, no, it's just I uh, am, yeah, but you know, I've been researching to try to go back to when superstition and the meaning of superstition has changed 
over the course of the centuries. And priests used to perform magic back, I guess, 1200, 1500. And then it got to be where using items to conduct this magic was seen as. It's when they started, when the Protestant groups started breaking away from the Catholics. There's a protest in the Catholic Church is when yeah. and all that stuff stopped because they didn't want anything to do with any of that. Well, because they saw it as, as um, giving thing. power to something outside of God. Right. So I can kind of get that. Reading see. Wax was another one. You know, Reading Wax. Uh-uh, I -uh, haven't heard of that one. But that's it's interesting kind of to say that because of my mama used them. Do you know? Wax and pour it in cold water and you know, take these shapes and read the shapes. Yeah. Did you read about that or do you know somebody that did it? I saw her. I saw her. Huh. Did it come true or was she just talking in general about it? I see seen her do it. <laughs> But I've never heard anybody talk about that before. And my mom got the wax from somewhere. It had to be a bayberry wax, so I thought it was something in the actual bayberry itself. Yeah. Like the potato and the... I think probably we're talking about two different things. Actual physical... <coughs> be called alchemy. We talked about alchemy in class last night, so we talked about that. And then spiritual. If you can separate the two, I don't know. You know, in Samuel it talks about the witches. It says they have a, they had broided hair. Have what kind of hair? Broided hair. Yeah. I guess it was curly and flat mine, right? It sticks or out braids. everywhere. braids. I took it to mean braids. It's supposed to be like curly hair that sticks out. Huh. It's not, not combed. Yeah. It just kind of sticks out. So you think you're a witch? I don't know. <laughs> you ever heard of that play, Witch Boy? Which what? Witch Boy. The play? Uh -uh. It's a good play. You can read that sometime. You can find it. Yeah. Well, about, it's, it's, it's from the mountains. It's about a boy who's, a, who's taught witchery yeah. as, a, as a young boy in the mountains. So I did... saw that play when I was uh, like 18. It's based on this thing. So, did Brady think she was a witch? I don't know. She had she had some strange powers. In her. But see, in the Chinese martial arts, you know, that I study, that's not a big deal because they do that all the time. The actual, my teachers, teachers and stuff, you know, they were uh, exorcists. Uh, kind of stuff we're talking about today. It's like a very experience. Yeah, the priest. Yeah. It's interesting to study that stuff. You know, look at the religions. And religion seems to all go back to when the stuff came constantly, out. yeah, common, a common base of something. But you know, these beliefs. And this way of believing, I, I consider myself a Christian, but still believe you consider yourself a Christian, but still believe. I don't think you see that outside of mountain people's too generalized, I think. But in America, I think, or among, and I found more and more, but they call them intellectuals that just say that religion is a, is a crutch, um, which makes me laugh. But you don't see. I guess I'm trying to prove that mountain people are special with these gifts. I mean, there's no way it can be yeah. proven one way or the other, so I'm no, just writing a paper just, about right. the way yeah. it goes. Yeah, I, I believe that. I believe this is what I've carried down through them. There's no different way about this. Just so much respect to these guys. They believe that spirituality was a. a was a much stronger, closer thing than a lot of people think these days. Uh, you know, you have a possession, which would be a bad thing. Uh, in other words, the religions that believe that they were here before, or they were a different person, you know, 
See, like forth. reincarnation. See, uh, see, I believe that that's possession. I believe that they're possessed by spirit who was in another time. And so they, have, they can see that stuff because they're also possessed. Yeah. Okay. Did you get that? In a bad way. Well, it's in a way. I guess it's bad to me. It's bad. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Depending on the they, behavior. They think, the well, I was, a, I was a so and so during this time, and I was a so and so during this time, and I was a so and so during this time. And because uh, some people really believe that, and I believe they believe that because they are. They're possessed by that spirit or spirits. And so they can actually, in other words, if you put them under hypnosis or whatever, they may talk about, uh, I was a. It's really funny when you hear people talk about this stuff, you know, usually there are some hierarchy, there, there's something yeah. great right in this line, yeah, whatever. But uh, I believe that some of them uh, are probably possessed by right, more than one spirit, so they can actually see that stuff, talk about that stuff, experience that stuff within their human body. Yeah, I thought maybe it's all going on at the same time, that the, the whole literal, <coughs> when Christ says we're all one, and God said we are one, that we are. So what, what, my spirit was doing 500 years ago, it's doing right now, but I'm not aware that it's doing it right now. Yeah. I mean, that's been some of the speculation yeah. that I've done. Um, okay, yeah. And the issues of taking care of your body, like we are all part of one body. And it's um, literally. Did you see that movie Avatar? Yeah. You know how that was all they joined together and under the tree and stuff? Yeah. I'm not convinced that that's not what's going on. Yeah, there might be a that, That's part of it we can never understand. Uh, You mean like the theory, theory of relativity and different, different? Yeah, different things going on at once. Yeah. yeah. I can't get the word on anyway. Well, you know, did you read or see on CNN about that particle that they discovered that will change everything about physics and what oh, yeah. Einstein believed? I mean, I know. I do know. I have to say I do know that there, we, we just won't get it all until Christ comes and the whole everything changes. I don't think we'll ever. Yeah, no, I know. And children can be so more open to it. Huh? Children, I think that's why children are so protected and so why well, little child shall lead them is they're just wide open. They don't disbelieve anything. No, if they're, if they're told if a stove is hot, then it's hot. You can be hypnotized. I knew this guy, you take a, a penny and put it on your chain. The penny was hot when you have hypnosis. He burned it. Have a time focus on this paper. <laughs> yeah, you picked a problem, sir. So, now was he a hypnotist from around here? No, no, no. Okay. Was father. Yeah. Yeah. Dimensions is the word I was after, but different dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe there could be uh, many different dimensions going on. Sometimes we probably have some. Step in and like a, when the Bible crossed, said he walked through a door. When he came after me, he walked through the door. So, which was real? Was he entered the door? See how I'm thinking? Which, which was the reality? Yeah, and was the spirit walking through it, in or and was not. was he actually reality and were he? Yeah. Anyway. I got. I know. I got you. So, all of this is this why you you are an artist, and I know there's no way to prove that. What's that now? All all of what you believe is what made you what you are. You are, and you are an artist. I think you consider yourself an artist. I would hope you would consider yourself yeah. an artist because I think you're seen that way. A lot of people see you that way. Oh, there's no <laughs> doubt. 
raised, being raised with all these ideas and stuff, they think the way I think. No doubt about it. Then, you know, you go down your own, you start seeing things, and you're a result of what you see and feel. But, uh, yeah, I believe in the paranormal, in spirituality. I believe in uh, angels. Dad was cutting a tree down one time. It was probably his bigger hand. He was cutting this uh, big businessman. I was supposed to do the work, and then I, it was these big trees, and I was just like, I don't want to cut those trees by myself. They're just too big. So Dad started cutting this tree. He had this giant limb that stuck out on it way up on one side. And when you cut, when you cut the tree, right when you get through it, you step back about three or four foot, and you watch it to see which way it's going to go, whichever way it's going to go, you get out of it. Okay, you, don't, you don't turn your back on it and run. You're going to have a good foot and you get out of the way. And so I saw Dad cut it, you know, and I'm standing back a ways, and I saw the tree start falling in the direction it's supposed to fall. And then when it hit, it twisted and hit on that limb, and the butt of the tree, like I said, is about that big around, went flying, and I saw it coming right toward him. And as it was coming toward him, I saw him stumble backwards and just missed his head and slammed into the ground about four foot deep. Would have took his head off his shoulders, would have killed him right there. And I come running up screaming, the chainsaw still running right in his hand. I was screaming, did you see that? Did you see that? And he goes, no, he said, but my garden angel did. It was a push. She pushed he him fell, back. Because she stumbled. He stumbled. She pushed him. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a push. It just went back like that. So he thoroughly believed in God and angels. And I believe that too. I know when I was working in the sheriff's department, one of my buddies said that they were in a high speed chase. And uh, they saw one of the cars pass them, another deputy, two, two people in it, and then it went up the road and it crashed. It didn't make one of the curves and crashed. And the guy got checked on me and said, Where's the other one? He said, Nobody was in there. He was okay. Wow. And so he had saw yeah. an angel sitting with him in the So car. he survived the crash because of his garden. Yeah. Bob used to get this little magazine. What was it called? Angels Among Us, maybe, or something like that? You tell, yeah, tell about it. And God Post would have that sometimes. That's it, God Post, yeah. Yes. yeah. Tell about those things. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I always like those stories. So Cece would want me to get back to the music. You, I've heard you tell the story that you didn't really start playing a lot. Did you my grandma when she was young. All that hair. That's what my grandma looked like when she was Yeah, I saw the pictures your mama showed me. That's why I looked up. It's like, it's almost exactly like her. Yeah, yeah. that's why I looked up. Angels among us. If you need to take a call for that. No. Are we good? Matter of fact, I need to put this on vibrate, so it won't mess me up for him singing. Oh, yeah. I'll have him ring while I'll sing a song. Because I've got to I've got to get coffee before we go in there, so maybe stop about 30, 20 till. Yeah. Get the restroom and go, because the room's just right around the corner. So, uh... The sto I heard you tell the story. You really didn't start playing a lot until after your daddy died or your grandfather. When did you start? I mean, I know you said you played when you were young. I've seen pictures of you in high school playing at an elementary school. But was there a break of your playing and then when you started back? Yeah, there was a break in my playing. It was when I was married. I was running to Kung Fu school, just trying to make a living. Yeah. Trying yeah. to pay for my house and that kind yeah. of thing, you know. And I, took, I didn't play there for a long time. But to be honest, most people I played with and hung out with just left. <laughs> Moved to different Vince, places. Yeah, the Vince's brother. Uh, I played with him a lot. Uh, they, uh, we had a little group called Mountain Music Makers. We used to play together. And uh, they all left. And I had a buddy named Ronnie Towns, and I played with him a lot. He left. There's nobody to play with anymore. Yeah. 
that you know. I mean, there's people to play with. It's just not. There's plenty of people. Yeah. Yeah. But did your music change? I mean, it seems it's probably different than what you played before. Or you always play traditional. I mean, you're in high school, I'll get on guitar and play a little bit of you know, classic rock stuff. So the ballads, have you had to actively seek them out, remember them, or are they just in your memory from hearing your dad and grandpa they're playing them growing up? No, I heard grandpa play them when I was young, so they're still in my mind. I just went to the ASU collection and then listen to his renew. listen to them to renew things when I was uh, probably. Uh, 16 or 17 when Grandpa passed away. Yeah. When he started renewing the, the words and things like that. I, I knew pretty much all the tunes. And stop playing them. When did you start playing back? Yes, I know. When did you start playing a lot again? When I was 16, I started playing pretty heavy. And uh, then when I got married and started working and stuff, and I played some then. Uh, I'd play it like. American Legion Auxiliary, my mom was in that. And uh, I would just do programs and stuff with, yeah, for them. I'd play here and there. So, yeah. In high school, I played some. I had a girl played the flute, and a girl played together. It was kind of general music. Uh, but then when I got married and all that, I stopped playing for a while. It was probably 24. I was just doing the martial arts so heavy. I just, I traveled with that a lot. Yeah, yeah. And the banjo, I just, I just sit to the side there. And every once in a while I get it out. And then uh, when I came to CC's class a few years back, what was that? 05? <laughs> so there it is.